So we just set up our basically our first keyframe here. But I don't want you to just take it for granted. So I'm establishing my setting before my character gets introduced and drops from above. And what I want to do is really simplify and understand this setting. First of all, because I made a copy of my assignment one and then recomposed it into a square and then made that square eight by eight inches by 150 pixels per inch. Because we're using Photoshop, if we're doing PhotoPI, we do eight by eight by 100 or even by 72 if you have a slow computer. It will still give you a good GIF animation. I need to separate out certain assets. Oops. And I need to unlock certain things in order to delete them. So I don't need my sketch anymore. We're going to have so many layers in our assets folder. I think of my assets file as a treasure box. It's like a treasure chest of all the little puppets I might want to animate with, all the little props, even the backgrounds. So if I turn these off, I ask myself, does my keyframe sketch, my rough storyboard, does it ever show the mountains moving? Or are those background mountains always there? And the answer is those background mountains are always there. So let me turn off every layer, all these potential assets, and I get this. And then I ask myself, can I lock that layer in? Can I lock this layer in? Can I lock this in? Can I lock this in? And the answer to all of that is yes. This is the backdrop behind my stage. So I can take all four of those layers, and I should, because it will make my life a lot easier as I'm making keyframes, and I'm going to select them all. Make sure that you're not on assignment one, right? I've saved this as a new file, and I've resized it to eight by eight inches by 150. Now I'm going to go to layer and I'm going to merge those four layers I've selected. And the shortcut for that is command E. So now that's one layer. So I've got my backdrop. There is this, which covers up a lot of my middle ground. And I am going to keep this as a separate asset, even though my creature is basically going to um, not knock any of this out. But what I could do is shake this a little bit to show that there's impact. So when my creature hits something in the foreground, this might jiggle a little bit, and that will help. So this is what's called a secondary background. If you're used to a kind of stagecraft, you have backgrounds, and then you have secondary backgrounds. And this was really popular during Renaissance staging, where you'd have like a, a background of a sunset, and then you'd have a ship cut out of paper or something really big, and it would be a secondary background, but that ship would slowly rock back and forth. And then in front of that, you have all of your pirate characters, you know, dancing and telling their story, right? So this would be like a little secondary background element. So I'm going to keep that. And notice, I might even make this a more useful asset by growing it a little bit. So I'm going to say Command-T to free transform, and I'm just going to stretch it in all directions a little bit and then sink it down. Why is that helpful? Well, now I can actually move it not only up and down, but also back and forth a little bit without those edges being cut off. Okay, another background asset I might build that I don't have is it's going to be weird. I have these really strong clouds. I'm going to have characters dropping from the sky, but I have this little indication here that it'd be nice if the clouds moved. So that makes it feel like an active environment, right? So I'm going to build some clouds. How can I do that? I can go to Pixabay, and I can composite them. That's probably the easiest if I want to go with this kind of photorealistic collage aesthetic, but I want really puffy clouds, puffy, I don't know why I said puffy. So let's see, skip these up here, 
So this is our, our overall texture overlay asset, but I want clouds more like this. Right. I could even do clouds like this if I wanted. They all work as long as I'm really intentional about it. What I don't want are probably clouds that are really going to distract. So this is just to build some atmosphere. So let me download those second to largest, even though they're going to be bigger than I need, especially at screen resolution. Yeah, I want to want to be able to show you because this isn't about even though I'm using assets that are very believable. I can combine those with assets that aren't as believable. Again, think of Space Jam, think of Mary Poppins, thinks of, of figure and background that don't necessarily match. So what I would do is just kind of cut these out roughly. Hold down shift, add to my selection. Duplicate them, just like we've learned in compositing. Delete the smart object they come from. Now these are on their own layer. And if they're, whoops, if they're on their own layer, I am then able to animate with them, right? Like they can kind of move in from the side. They could grow, they could rotate, they could change color, they could do, they're just pixels. So your style doesn't need to be photorealistic. Your movement doesn't need to be totally believable for GIF animations. Your assignment is to showcase a transformation. So my story could be that this cloud comes in or these two clouds come in and then they transform into these clouds to kind of match the setting. It's like a Into the Spider-Verse kind of thing. These clouds came in from a different dimension. They realize they don't match the reality of that dimension. And so they change themselves to match. Now for this, I'm going to take these clouds, same thing, I'm going to rough cut around them. duplicate that. Then I'm actually going to go back and I'm also going to grab, because it's such a big asset, but that's helpful. I'm going to also grab it on this side. And this is what's called a panning asset, P-A-N-N-I-N-G. A panning shot in animation is when something moves across the screen uninterrupted. So what does that mean? Well, I've got this cloud and I've got this cloud, this half of it. I want to layer them together like that. There we go. And I want to merge them, Command E, so they're all one cloud. And then I'm going to grow them just like I did with my secondary background. And now I have a panning asset that stretches across it, right? So what can I do with this? First, I can get rid of this hard edge at the bottom so that it blends. So what we've learned from compositing, I'm actually not teaching you any new tools with this project. It's the last of our compositing projects. So all the, the direct adjustments, clone stamp, the blending eraser, all of these things, you're expected to use the way we've been using them. But what I'm teaching you is a different process for how you think about and set up a time-based artwork. And so I'm building these assets not for one image, but so that I can make several images and control these different puppets. So the, the assets are the puppets. They each need to be on their own layer. So I'm going to erase out these hard edges. And basically now, this cloud, I'll keep it blue up there, can move across and more or less blend in with its environment. And if I want to, I can take my, my lasso 
or my magic wand rather, select these blues of the sky, delete them, and then soften those edges. Because if I want these to be really believable clouds kind of moving in, now I'm going to use the magic wand as just a stencil for my soft eraser. And I can change the color of these clouds. Yeah, I think that works. Okay, let me get rid of these hard edges. So I can really just move these clouds from one side to the other throughout my story to show that there is movement happening in this environment. So this is what's called a panning asset. Sometimes an entire background is a panning asset. So you build a background that's a lot bigger than your actual frame, and you just move it a little bit each frame. That's how you would do zoom shots, panning shots. But for mine, I'm going to have a stable camera, you know, always in one position, but these clouds are going to be moving across it. Now I'm going to do this, select all this, but then I'm going to use my eraser at a much lower opacity. To kind of transition it. Yeah. Okay, so now, just like I could do with these as an asset, I can do now with more believable clouds because I treated their edges. And if I really want to help them blend in like a texture overlay, what can I do? I can just take their opacity down. And what else can I do? Just like we do with the texture overlay, I can play with the blending mode. So if I take it at a higher opacity with the soft light blend, it's just like this mountain mist is coming in. I'm not. But I could. Right? It's just it depends what your story has in mind. The reason I'm not going to use the other clouds is because I want my transformation is the setting in the foreground with my character. And those clouds would distract a little bit. But I like the idea of kind of mixing graphic styles. Ooh, okay, so that's my cloud asset. Does everyone kind of understand that? It's like a smoke machine for the play. So I'm going to start it right there. All right, next, I have this foreground asset. Yes, that's good, that stays. This foreground asset. Yes, that's good, that stays. This asset, very important for my story because it's the first thing that gets knocked down. But maybe I want to move it a little bit. So that when it gets knocked down, it reveals that, that apple behind it. This foreground asset, maybe I want to nestle this down a little bit. This foreground asset and this one. And I'm trying to decide, is it better without this? What do you guys think? It's a little distracting, right? So I have enough without it, so I don't think I need it. I don't need the big lollipop in that corner. Should I do something else with this? Maybe I just stretch it over to there. Yeah, right there. Okay, so now I feel like this is my first keyframe. So that's my first keyframe there. This is my first keyframe. Now I'm able to create a secondary Photoshop file. This is my assets file. What I'm going to do is say file, save. Right? There it is, my assets. Now I'm going to say go to my stage file 
and I'm going to create a new file in Photoshop. 